All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And I'm here in San Diego as usual. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Todd Burgess, who is in lovely Dallas today. How are you doing, Todd? Hey, I'm great, John. Thanks for the opportunity to visit with you. And Todd is is a coach and a mentor, and uh, he has worked, he's mentored and coached Fortune 500 companies and companies of all sizes over many years, companies that need to grow revenue, that need to be innovative leaders, that uh, that have big revenue targets to chew or to hit. So what we wanted to talk about today was Todd's concept of mindset reset. So first of all, when we start, Todd, uh, why is mindset so important? And why do we and how do you and why do you need to reset it? You know, one of the one of the phrases that I love to use, um, especially with clients that I'm coaching is, are you allowing your self-talk to be self-limiting? Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things is, especially as I'm whether it's speaking from a stage and trying to motivate and inspire an audience to do something different or whether it's coaching individual clients one on one or even in group coaching situations. One of the hardest things that I find as a coach and as a leader is to get people to think differently Mm -hmm. and to be willing to embrace changes, whether it's changes that the organization is wanting to make, or whether it's changes that, frankly, they need to make in their own life if they're going to be more productive, if they're going to be more effective, um, if they're going to live fuller, uh, more happier lives. I mean, obviously, we have to embrace change. And so I, I think one of the things that really got me interested in mindset is seeing that a lot of people were having a hard time making a shift from what they believed to be true um, and seeing things from a different perspective. And so that's really what I strive to do with folks whenever I'm uh, starting out with them is, is help them appreciate where maybe their mindset is fixed and where they need to shift that and pivot that into a growth mindset. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I keep quoting the statistic because it kind of was mind blowing to me. But you know, Psychology Today had this um, yeah. statistic, you know, that seven, nearly seventy percent, I think it was sixty nine point eight or something like that, of our daily self talk is negative, uh, yeah. and therefore, to your point, is that's one of the first places you have to start. Right, is to start to overcome, you know, maybe limiting beliefs and start feeding your mind with more positive messages. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in just building resilience um, mm-hmm. is, is I think, really key for a lot of people because, as you said, the majority of what we tend to think about, especially as it relates to ourselves, oftentimes can be negative. And that comes from what I believe from someone who has not yet built the muscle of a resilient, strong mindset. And by the way, John, I do believe that the mind is a muscle just like sure. other tissues in our body that are that are muscles that, that, that can be grown that can be changed and i believe science has proven in neurology now that we can actually create new neural pathways by the way that we think by the experiences that we have and that we don't have to stay within the same thought patterns neural pathway patterns that maybe we've had impression in our minds for so long yeah well if you think about it it, it makes sense because with the rest of our our, our our body right i mean say take for instance if you play a sport or whatever if you if you do something in a particular way and then somebody shows you a better way or you learn a better way you have to train yourself over time it has to become you have to consciously train yourself to do it differently same with your mind right if you have limiting thoughts or negative thoughts you actually have to train yourself to flip them to positives, right? So it is really training your brain and catching yourself consciously. Yeah, you know, it's interesting as by way of analogy. So yesterday, I had the opportunity to play golf. It was only the third time this year that I've been able to get on the course. I don't get to get out a lot, but it was a beautiful day. The The, the wind here was, was down. It was fairly cool. And so I went out and played around and I used to play a whole lot and I got to a point where I wasn't progressing. I wasn't getting any better. Mm-hmm. And what I did in that situation was I realized that if I was going to get better, then I needed to invest in a coach. And so I actually hired a golf coach. And one of the very first things that he did in working with me was regroup my swing. Mm-hmm. And so to your point, I needed to create new muscle memories in the way that I was moving the club in the same way that we need to recreate new thought memories when it comes to um, some of the beliefs that we have that that are holding us back that are not going to allow us to progress until we come up with some new ideas. And oftentimes that sometimes takes involving someone else, right? Yeah. Just like hired a coach. Uh, maybe we don't need to hire a coach, but maybe we need to, to bring someone in that can help us think about how to think differently 
and create those new pathways. Yeah. Well, I do always find it interesting because I do think that uh, in your professional life, I mean, you should consider a coach uh, and a mentor because, uh, as I said, let's face it, um, we do invest in our hobbies and sometimes we, we don't invest in the thing that puts bread on our table, right? And and so I, I'm a big believer in hiring. Well, my first executive, when I got my first executive job, first thing I did was actually hire a coach. Um, because I wanted to, I wanted to hit the ground running, and I also knew that this was all new to me, if you like. But let's let's come back, okay? So we're in June right now, so we're halfway through the year, and for a lot of people on calendar years, uh, they're now assessing, especially salespeople, they're now assessing. Ooh, I'm I'm well off my quota, or I've got a big nut to crack in the second half of the year, and maybe a lot of those limiting beliefs or negative beliefs are are starting to flood into them. How? What are some practical things that they can do right now to set themselves up for a better second half? You know, so I'm a big believer in being one percent better every day. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the talks that I give. Uh, I call it the one percent rule, and it's this idea that if we would be one percent better in something each and every day, if we would purpose that, hey, today I'm going to be 1% better in my business life, my productivity, maybe my relationships in my personal life, or even in my personal fitness, that if we would commit to that, we can create this unstoppable momentum. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people that are watching this, maybe the thing that they need to do is they need to say, okay, I've not hit the marks that I set for my goals. By the way, I think it's incredible that people watching this would be thinking about checking in on their goals because i think a lot of us don't do that until we get to the end of the year and then it's to make those changes so i love what you've said i think that's the first thing we need to do is let's have that check in in fact to be honest probably doing that once every six months is not sufficient it Mm -hmm. should be one of the things where they're doing it uh, at least quarterly if not even monthly or maybe even more frequently than that but one of the first things that they can do is begin to say okay so how can i get one percent better in my mindset when i have that negative thought how can I capture that thought? How can I take that, that thought captive and then cast that aside and say, you know what, not gonna, I'm not going to listen to that inner voice that's giving me those negative thoughts. If they would just do that right off the bat, that would make a huge difference in the potential for their outcomes later on in the day, later on in the week, later on in the year. Yeah, I, I I totally agree with you. And I think what's interesting also about what you say in the 1% is we tend to you look at your goal, but then sometimes we we get paralyzed by the goal because it seems so big and so far away yeah. that you that you have to say, yes, that's where I'm going, but here's the next best step I need to take in order to get there. So as you say, like trying to improve 1% every day or do something better today, maybe it's just uh, catch those negative thoughts. That's your goal for the rest of today is catch negative thoughts and translate them into positive. I'll share with you, John, what I actually happen to have this sitting next to me. So what I do in the morning is, number one, I absolutely stay away from my phone because uh, for me personally, I found that it's very tempting for me to uh, check social media. And probably the thing that kills me the most is I found that I was checking my email first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, what I realized was that email is everyone else's agenda for me for that day or for that week. And so if I open up my email and I began to see things that people were asking of me right off the bat, I would want to go and get after those and begin to attack those. And all of the other things that I needed to do for me to advance my business, to advance my productivity were getting lost in someone else's agenda. So what I started doing, um, I started this a couple of years ago, is I'll keep a little notebook, um, just a little moleskin, real thin, it's maybe like 50 pages, and I'll set it down next to me. as I sit down and have my morning cup of coffee and I will just journal a little bit about some of the things that I need to do Mm. that day. And then I'll look at that and I'll say, okay, of those things, what are the two things that are the absolute most important things that I need to accomplish today to move my business forward, to move my productivity forward? If I could just pick two things out of the 20 that are on my to-do list, those are the the, the big ones that that I've got to take advantage of. And the truth about this, John, is that those are oftentimes the things that I really don't want to do. Yeah. Right? Because the things that we know we need to do are usually the (laughs) things that we don't want to do because it does seem so onerous. Mm -hmm. So what I'll end up doing is I will actually time block my morning. So this morning, before our call here this morning, I time blocked about two hours where I just focused on that one big thing, the most important thing that I could do today 
to move us forward and uh, or to move me forward. And, and that's how I start my day. So that gets my mindset in the right frame of mind, knowing that instead of attacking all these little things that I don't want to do that are low value, I focus on the one big thing. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's a great point uh, that you raise here and, and one that I've been talking about for a while. But that, that morning ritual, because one of the things that um, I've been discussing with people now is if you get up in the morning and you immediately hit your social media, right? You know, we live in this crazy culture right now, but I think it's this compar- comparison culture, right? Where you go onto social media and naturally as a human being, you start seeing all these things and making comparisons. You go, oh my God, look at Todd. Todd's doing so much better than I am. And really, I have no idea. I'm just seeing snapshots of your life. I mean, once yeah. upon a time, pre-social media, let's face it, ignorance was bliss. We had no idea what was going on with other people. So we had to focus on ourselves. So I would say, is that the best way to start your day? Is even the news the best way to start your day? Because that's the face of the news is set up now, regardless of whether what end of the political spectrum or you 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 sit on is it's set up to provoke you and make you get a reaction out of you. So are these the things that are going to set you up positively for the day? And I don't think they are. Yeah, you, you know, you're you. I'm sure have heard this, and many that are listening to this have heard this as well. So one of the things that Simon Sinek talks about uh, when he's, I believe it was in his talk, start with why. It's a TED talk that he did. Mm-hmm. He says, you know. If you have some type of an alcohol problem or you think you do, the way that you know is that if getting that first drink is the first thing that you think about in the morning, Mm -hmm. then you you probably have something that you need to address there, right? And he says in a similar way, if the first thing you do in the morning is reach for your phone and open up your social media account, you probably have a bit of an addiction (laughs) issue there that you need to address at some Mm -hmm. point, right? And I think that a lot of people get involved in that. And then the next step is, as you say, they get caught up in the whole comparison game. And one of the things I like to say is that comparison is a thief of joy. Mm-hmm. When, yeah. we find our, and compare, when we find ourselves comparing ourselves constantly to other people, oh, I didn't get that, that, that trip. Look at that car they get to drive or look at that hotel they got to stay in or look at that amazing food that they got to eat. And we compare ourselves and say, well, I don't have those things. Then in essence, we're allowing that to steal our joy. And that's another area where we've got to build a, strong, resilient mindset against allowing others to take away something that doesn't belong to them. And we've got to do it. Yeah, no, I I think it's great. There's a great, uh, there's a great uh, photo that I I had on my Instagram for a while while back was, uh, it was a photo, it was an Instagram photo, though, of somebody doing a handstand, right, you know, doing really, uh, and then there was a second photograph where it panned back, and there's actually somebody holding their legs, right? So if you only see the original, you think, wow, that's so cool. And then when you see the reality, you go, actually, it wasn't that cool at all. In fact, and that's the point they were making. And I think we're so good at filling in you know, we see one snapshot and we fill in the gaps and we always fill in the gaps in a way that doesn't sort of serve us. Um, so I think it's also like that with, again, getting back to, to, to salespeople maybe who are looking at the second half of the year. Again, to your point, they have to really compare themselves to themselves and say, OK, how can I improve tomorrow and how can I or today and how can I do better today? And what are the things I need to do? Yeah. You know, and, and I, I like that because especially when it comes to salespeople, which which I, I've spent the vast majority of my career in the healthcare mm-hmm. field as a sales person, both as starting as a representative and then moving through different levels of leadership within our sales organization. We have a leaderboard, and mm-hmm. I'm sure many of the folks that are that are watching yeah. this that are listening to this, their organizations also have some semblance of a leaderboard. And right now, senior leaders are stepping back. They're looking at the leaderboard. They're saying, where's Todd? Where's John? Is he at the top of the leaderboard? Is he at the middle? Is he down at the the bottom? And one of the things I think that I would want to leave the folks that are listening to this thought is that your position on the leaderboard does not define you. Mm -hmm. You know, you are not defined by where you are on the leaderboard. And oftentimes, unfortunately, our organizations will assign a label to us. Typically, at the end of the year, based upon where we were with the leaderboard. And so I would just challenge people to not let the leaderboard define you, knowing that business changes from year to year oftentimes are outside their control. But what I would really challenge them to think about is what is within their control that they can impact today. Not thinking about the customers making decisions that are outside of their control, the market doing things that are outside of your control, even your competitors doing things that are outside of your control 
going back to what is that most important thing that they can do today to create some positive momentum to finish the year strong and not spend so much time, what I call leaderboarding, looking at the leaderboard, comparing where they are relative to other individuals. Yeah, because I think it went in, in that scenario, like you just said, is I think then you then start to focus on, well, obviously I'm behind, I'm behind Todd because he's got the best territory. Uh, my territory sucks. And then I've had all these things going on here. Blah, blah. And before you know it, I, I've, I've focused on everything that's outside of my control. And I've yeah. kind of given myself a get out of jail free card. And it's like, well, it's no wonder where I am. Instead of, as you say, is I put all those things aside and I say, okay, what are the things that are within my control that I can focus on, on really optimizing? Yeah, and so it's interesting, on my social media, I created this tile where I put it up on Instagram, and it starts with um, a flowchart, and at the top it says, did something bad happen? Yes or no? <laughs> and if it's yes, then the next part is, can I do something about it? Yes or no? If I can't do anything about it, then the bottom part says, then stop complaining. Yeah. If I can do something about it, it points to the same box and says, then stop complaining. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So whether you can or whether you can't, don't complain about it anymore, anymore. Get off your tail and go do something. Mm -hmm. If you can't, if you can't control it, focus on the things that you can control. Yeah. And I'm a big believer, and I'm sure you are, is that you know, moment, momentum is key. And so you're actually trying to do things. Um, addressing the things that are within your control, as you said here, you're making yourself one percent better every day. That creates a momentum, and momentum, and momentum builds on momentum, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I think there's a there's there's a book that's written by Gary Keller, who founded Keller Williams Real Estate, and he gives this great diagram of you, we've all seen the, the the dominoes all lined up and how you know you can create these really long uh, pathways for dominoes. He gives a description that if you can get 1% better and get that creates this exponential domino effect that the dominoes get bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. as you keep going. So within a given year, if you are 1% better every single day, then you have like a 36% growth factor from day one to day 365 just by getting 1% better. So momentum is absolutely huge, but you've got to find what's that one thing that's going to give me that appreciable momentum today. Yeah, I love it. That's uh, a great uh, note to end on today, Todd. So before we go, uh, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you. Yeah, thanks, John. So I do public speaking and executive coaching. Those are the two things that I really like to focus in on. Um, they can find me on my website, dtoddburgess.com. D is for David. Uh, but I go by my middle name, Todd. So dtoddburgess.com. And that actually is also the same handle for my Twitter account, my Instagram account, and my Facebook account. Um, I'm probably most active on Instagram, uh, post quite a bit there, and get a lot of good feedback from folks there. So people can find me at D Todd Burgess uh, on Instagram as well. Perfect. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.